Hey, Sean Foyt here, and we are on the Glory Bus Woo! in Colorado, and we're parked right in front of the Capitol, the state Capitol here in Colorado. This is city number 37, US Capitol number 37. My good friend, Lauren Boebert, cruised by. She's gonna be with us praying and worshiping tonight. She just had a big primary election win. Yes, glory We're God. so pumped. Thank you. And we've been friends for a while. We've worshiped across America and inside of the US Capitol together. And <laughs> yeah. It's been amazing, but uh, so pumped you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad that you're in Colorado. Yeah. Like, it, it is not one piece of legislation or one election that is going to truly save our country. It's revival. Amen. And we have to have Christians now more than ever positioned. They have to position themselves and be prepared for, for what's ahead. Because right now we've got to speak out. We have to be engaged. If we are silent on any of this, we lose by default. And yeah. we're, we're just so close to losing everything. Yeah. Uh, in in the natural, like we need Christians right now to take their authority and press in. And 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 I, and I love that. I love your story. I love, you know, one of my favorite things about you and is just you're an intercessor and you walk through the halls of Congress and you pray yes. and you worship and, you know, you've led us into offices and places in the Capitol and and you believe in the power of prayer because yes. we're literally in a spiritual war, and I think that's the thing that people are starting to tune into, you know, even as we go capital to capital, last night we were in Utah, um, tomorrow we're gonna be in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but every capital, like we're, we're at the actual legislative epicenter yes. in the natural of who's releasing the laws and the decrees. I mean, think about here in Colorado, the decrees of darkness that have been yes. released from this place. Yes. And today we're transforming that. We're gonna have thousands of people on the steps of the Capitol declaring life, taking communion, worshiping God, gathering a church in unity. Um, why do you feel like it's so important for believers in 2024 to unplug, that's what I've been telling people, unplug from the narrative of the social media pundits and the Twitter wars and the craziness, plug into God's narrative. Why is that so? Yes. How has that been for you on your journey? Yes. Well, it, it's very obvious that that God's narrative is the only one that you can successfully be plugged into because everything else is fading. It's temporal. And, and so when you think that just your regular day to day without God's influence is what's going to be the determining factor. Well, then you've got it all wrong. I've yeah. got it wrong before. I mean, look, we could go through Hebrews chapter 11. This is the hall of fame, uh, faith chapter in the Bible, and you see more than 20 men and women of God who accomplished God's will by faith. It wasn't by what they thought was right or what they were experiencing or how they dressed or whatever it may be. It was by faith that they were able to overcome obstacles in their life. And God is so amazing. He has given us their story in almost its entirety. He didn't edit his children's stories. So even when they did come up short, when they when they fell, when they yeah. made a mistake or something horrible. I mean, we have we have adulterers and murderers and a prostitute in the lineage of, in the lineage of Jesus right, right there in Hebrews um, chapter 11. And God chose to leave that in there, yeah. I think, to inspire us today to say, you know what, if you stumble, I still have you and I still yeah. have a plan and a calling for you. So to tap into God's narrative right now is so important because he does have a future and a hope, a desired outcome, not just for America, but for all yeah. of his children throughout the world. And and this world is fading and it's yeah. eternity. Is, uh, for, uh, that's what we're striving for. Yeah. And so as many people as we can get on board with that and, and lead them into victory and show them the authority that they have right here on earth, then you know that that's victory so i love i mean i love the one of my favorite things about the hebrews 11 you're talking about is the the resilience the persistence i mean you've had a wild year yeah <laughs> you know yes. i mean talking about personally in your life and your family of course in your in your in your primary i mean in your congressional runs flipping yeah. districts moving like what what it's one of my favorite things about you is you're you you don't give up like yes. you are you are you're a yes. fighter yes. where does that come from how how do you maintain yes. that when attacks come in all areas of your life mm -hmm. well I mean I, we are on the glory bus so I'm you know I'm not just saying this because <laughs> that's where we're at but I but it is by faith because yeah. I, I have studied this the scripture in the word and that is where I get my strength joy is is that bucket that I use to drill up from the to, um, to draw up from the wells of salvation my my strength and healing and happiness and determination 
happen. But uh, all the attacks don't define me. My own mistakes don't define me. My divorce doesn't define me. You know, that's not something I ever wanted, not something that God ever wanted for my marriage, you know, right. but you, unfortunately, you know, things happened. And, yeah. um, you know, but in all of it, I, I cannot have a mentality of defeat. Right. I, I can't have a victim mentality because I know that there is more to pursue. I know there's more people yeah. to influence and more good to do. And, uh, you know, so in all of it, it's serving God to the best of my ability and, and trying to do more, um, you know, the next time it's, it's, from faith to faith, from glory right. to glory. There's different levels that yeah. we're going to experience. And even if I get in my own way and cause myself to take a tumble, you know, I know that God's grace and mercy is there to get me back up and yeah. back on course. So, so you know, you have, you know, I, I mean, I get levels of resistance. I get slander. I get all this stuff. You get that probably exponentially more, the memes, mm -hmm. all the stuff. Right. So what, <laughs> what is like your, what keeps your rudder? You know, like how do you, how do you, and people ask me this question and I, I have a way of answering, but I want to hear how you answer it. Like, how do you block that out yes. and focus on your assignment yes. and what God's called you to do? Well, first of all, I don't read the comments. Um, okay. You know, I mean, they're, they're, hey, that's a good, it is. don't read the comments. Don't read the comments. I yeah. mean, it's, it's trash, it's garbage. And right. you know, I mean, like you get some good ones on there, you know, people coming to your defense and stuff, but it, what influence is it really making? Maybe, maybe some, maybe none, right. but in, in every day, you know, I, I have to look at my direct surroundings yeah. and, and say, how am I going to move forward? I cannot allow the attacks and the slander, the hate, the yeah. ridicule to define who I am. Right. I, I've, Jesus paid too high of a price for me to focus on that because that would put me in a fetal position under a table crying right. every day if right. that's all I focused on. Right. But I, I know that I'm worth more, that, right. I, that I have greater value than that. I mean, Jesus laid down his life for me, for yeah. you, for us. Yeah. And I mean, that's the highest value that you could place on something. So. What, what, what are the, you know, I, I constantly feel like we have a generation that it's like, I don't know if they're, if, if they come into their calling or their mandate thinking it'll be easy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if whatever, but they get so dang. It's like everybody has a mental issue. Yeah. Everybody is, has trauma. Everybody has pain. Everybody, you know, it's like, we understand we go through these things, yeah. right? It's like Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. Absolutely. It's like guaranteed, guaranteed. right? But we're more than conquerors. Yes. So what is your, what is that message that you have to people? Well, you can only apply as much faith as you know. So if you don't know what God has said to you, if you don't know the yeah. promises that he's declared over your life, then how are you ever going to live those out? And so I, I think it's up to you and I in whatever capacity to try to shed that truth um, mm -hmm. to as many people as possible because yeah, we have more information and more awareness than ever and more problems than ever, right. in, in, especially in our youth. But if, if they don't understand the, the promises that are declared over them, that they are more than conquerors, that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, then they're going to have a sense of hopelessness. And I yeah. believe that that's a strategy from the enemy. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we have to have hope because hope is faith. It, it's, it's, faith is the substance of things hoped for the things right. not yet received yeah. and so God has called us the just the redeemed the chosen to live by faith if we are going to live by faith then we have to look at first Timothy chapter 6 it says fight the good fight of faith and we have to know that it's not easy. It is right. a fight. It is a battle. That yeah. battle is here. More battles are on the way, right. but we have the victory yeah. already. We aren't, we aren't fighting for victory. We are fighting this battle from a place of victory. Right. And that, and that is something that I said last night in Utah, because I mean, anytime there's like crazy spiritual warfare, I know God's about to do something yes. amazing. Cause we have this, I have a phrase, you know, greater the resistance, the greater the breakthrough. So we know there's immense resistance. Like last night, our generator cut off twice, never happened before. It's a brand new generator. Yeah. The sound uh, equipment cut off three times in the middle of the worship set. You know, talk about awkward, yes. there's thousands of people. However, it gave the church this opportunity to see, okay, hold on, we've been through COVID. We know how this goes. We don't yeah. know why that happened. We're gonna keep singing. And it was like this prophetic moment oh. of like, okay, the sound cut out, but our voices are here yes. and we're, we're gonna raise them. And I, I feel incredibly hopeful. I know we just came out of the, the debate, which was a total, you know, 
debacle and, and insane, right? On yes. the, from the Biden's perspective. Yes. What, as, as you head into the elections this year, as, as we head as America goes, like what, what are you holding on to? What are the words God's given you? Like, how are you praying? Like, share with us a little bit of that. Yes, I'm, well, each and every day I'm praying for wisdom, first of all, because I yeah. mean, that's what we need. I, like I said, we have so much information, so much knowledge right. that is right there at our fingertips all day long, but it does you no good if you don't apply it. And wisdom is applied knowledge. And, and so if we can take the things that we know and have been yeah. shown and apply those, then I mean, we could go so far. But but all, I'm always praying because I'm, I am from the federal government and I'm here to help, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Famous no, statement. I, 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 am, I am always praying for our, our governments to be righteous, you right. know, that, that God would remove the unrighteous and install righteous men and women who will honor his word right. and, and his people yeah. because that's what we need now more than ever. But. I mean, all throughout our nation, I, I think there's such an energy of hope and enthusiasm for our country that we haven't experienced maybe since 9-11. You know, I mean, people just, I, are, are, right. I, I'm seeing their love for our country because uh, there's been such an attack to say our country is horrible and evil and you must hate America. Right. And there's a pushback on that. And, and so that's what I want to grow. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want us to have unity. Um, you know, I've declared at my primary election, it, the people have spoken. They don't want the uniparty to govern us, but they do want a united Republican party to govern us. And I, I say Republican because we have the, the most Christian values within our party platform. And, you know, so we need to come together and unite because one, once we do, there's not going to be anyone who can stand against us successfully. Yeah. And well, and, and it, what's amazing is that, you know, we're here in Colorado, we're worshiping today and, and I was, we were joking about inviting the governor. He just texted you while, yes. while we said that. Well, I, yes, I made a joke. I said, oh, I should invite Governor Polis to the Capitol today. And I picked up my phone and he's texting me. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. This, this kind of stuff has been normal, honestly, on this tour. But um, but we, we end this party, like that we have 13 more states to go. Then we'll finish, the grand finale will be October 26th on the National Mall. Ah. It'll be eight days before the election. And it is, according to the National Park Service, the last big gathering before the elections. Oh, place. glory. Is this culmination. Yes. Talk for a minute about just, I know you're, you know, in Congress, you're, you're trying to get stuff done, you're trying to pass laws, you're trying, like, how important do you take the spiritual component of you being there? as a worshiper, as an intercessor, like you're, you're coming legislatively, obviously, and you're sent from Colorado yes. and you're going to win your election. Amen. Yes. Jesus in name. Jesus name. But give me this spit. Like what, how do you take the framework of I'm, I'm, I'm part of the army of God Yes. and I'm carrying the spirit of God inside of me to this place. How, how does that yes. I, I, I am not an effective legislator without that. I'm not an effective person, a mom, a friend, anything without the spiritual component. Uh, I've tried to live life my own way and it, it doesn't work. You know, I, I needed a savior. I needed Jesus to ma be the master of my life. Yeah, and, and so that spiritual component is everything. It's, it's what directs my legislative path. Yeah. path. It, it, it is what inspires me to intercede in the Capitol, to go into the House chambers and plead the blood of Jesus and invite yeah. the Holy Spirit's presence there. And, you know, I mean, all of this is spiritual. We don't war against flesh and blood, right? right? The, the, these are principalities and powers that we are warring against. And, you know, a lot of times I have to uh, remind myself and others, like, people aren't my problem. You're not my problem. It's it, there is a, an, an enemy that we are battling, right. and it is a spiritual warfare. And to um, you know, to be armored up, to be guarded, and to right. exercise the authority that has been yeah. given to us is so imperative. Um, because if we have authority and don't ever do anything with it, then what good is it? Right. I mean, that's like. You know, I, I have a hundred dollar bill and you know in my glove box in my car and I forget about it and I'm out of gas one day. Well I think I don't have any money to get gas and then you know, like oh right. stumble upon it. Oh there was yeah. a oh it belonged to me all along. I right. had that all along. I right. could have used that and didn't. And so that's kind of um, a short synopsis of, of a way to view the authority that Jesus has given us in this time. Yes. It belongs to us, but what are we going to do with it? Amen. And that's why we need every every believer activated like this is not a season you know to sit on the sidelines this is not a season to uh fall into discouragement and disappointment and even lethargy like we mm -hmm. gotta wake up yes. and i think that 
you know, that's one of the things that I'm excited for tonight in Colorado is watching people come alive. You know, standing here at the Capitol, a place that a lot of, you know, a lot of Christians don't have hope for. A lot of people are uh, have cursed this place. Um, but we have come, we're taking communion tonight. We're going to worship. We're going to declare the blood of Jesus yes. over the state of Colorado. What can people expect from this state yes. in the coming days? Well, you know, if we keep, the backbone if, if, of the, if we of keep this up, you know, I, I, I would love for Colorado to be the turning point to say, look, come like on. we were almost overtaken completely yeah. and entirely, um, but God. Uh, you know, but the people rose up and, and took their positions and we turned it around. You know, God has turned things yeah. around in the past before, and I believe that he's going to do it again. And and to say that this place, this building, any capital, any place where legislative activity t uh, is occurring is not important is, I mean, you're deceived because right. this is where important conversations that impact everyone's day-to-day -day yeah. life take yeah. place. And for Christians to be invited to those tables and to have a seat at those tables is one of the most spiritual things that can be happening right now, to give voice and to, to speak life into these places. We serve a God of resurrection. Yeah. And you know people may curse this building and say that all hope is gone and this is dead and it's dark, but we serve a God who loves to bring life. He is a life, wow. the life giver, and, yeah. and he is a resurrector. And so I believe that this can be resurrected and that we, if we collectively begin to speak life into this building and into the people who occupy it, then we're gonna see God work in amazing ways. Come on, Come on. I, I uh, keep filming, Gabe. I, so I got a prophetic word that was sent to me by a, an, a, an intercessor guy, and I know you love words and I lo know you love uh, but They're I want creative power I know yeah. I, I want to read this and then I would love it if you would pray because I, I do feel like uh, the there's an assignment I grew up in Montana I grew up in the Rocky Mountains the backbone of America near the top you know uh, we're we're going all the way through the Rocky Mountains to the very bottom Santa Fe which is the the last uh, major city on the Rocky Mountain the backbone of America but it's highest percentage of witchcraft, highest percentage of occult, but yet there's something so powerful that happens when we worship. Yes. And that's why there's such an assignment to push that down. Um, but I wanted to read this prophetic word and then, um, and then if you would pray, yes. and then we're gonna go out there and rip it up. But it yes. says, I had a dream that God was bringing revival to the Rocky Mountain areas of the United States and churches will not even have to post or share what's going on because they'll be so full there will not be any room to attend and it will spill over into a house church movement which i thought is really cool yes. this revival will not be led by noteworthy pastors but rather by a deployed army of believers i believe this is the season for the rocky mountains because they're referred to as the backbone of the nation god wants to strengthen the backbone of the united states i woke up at 221 from the dream as I laid in bed and started to pray into the dream, I felt the Lord say to, to get up and I'll show you more. So he showed me as I went downstairs, waking up at 221 refers to Acts 221, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's always good when numbers lead back to yes. the Bible. Yes, yes. Right? Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So it's my prayer, this is like the spinal column uh, of America, which is the avenue for blood and nerves that travel through the body, that this revival will spread throughout the nation. And as you can see right here, you know, that's the, yes. the Rocky Mountain region right there on the phone. So what's your prayer of Colorado? Yes. All right. No. Well, let, let's do, I mean, I love that. Um, and especially, you know, it's not even gonna have to be posted or advertised because the people are going to be there and that word of mouth and the overflow. And then I, I just want to encourage people, you know, church isn't just a place we go to. We are the church. Amen. And, you know, so it's not just four walls that are surrounding us. We are the church. And for us to disperse and, and go out on that assignment when we leave church, after we've been built up and edified to go out and minister to those and bring them back in, you know, that, that's what this is all about but glory to God let's pray Father God, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name. We come to you by the blood of Jesus. It's that precious blood that was shed on our behalf that grants us access into the holy of holies. God, we, we come to your throne room of yes, grace Lord. to receive that yes, grace and Lord. to receive mercy, that, that empowerment, God, that you are equipping us with to be your hands and feet, to be your mouthpiece in this time, yes. to reach people in a dark place, to reach them with the light of your love, God. I, I thank you that it 
it is your love that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to keep us in remembrance of everything that was purchased for us, everything that has been given to us and every place that you are leading us and guiding us, that it is not an accident, that it is divine when we have these connections with people and we don't know why we're talking to them or why we're encountering them, uh, encountering them, it's because God has a word for them because he has a mission and an assignment for them individually yeah. and for us to be bold and speak that out. I thank you, Father God, for this place. We are in Denver, Colorado. Yes. And right now we plead the blood of Jesus oh, yes. over Denver. Yes. I pray, God, that the scales would fall off of eyes. I yes. thank you the yes. eyes would be opened and enlighten yes, that people Jesus. would know the understanding yes, of their calling yes, that they would live that out I thank you father God that you have commanded us not to be perfect not to be flawless but Jesus before you ascended to the right hand of the father on high the command was to receive power from on high and Holy Spirit I think that you I thank you that you are here to en endow us with your presence with your power and that is the commandment that we receive you Holy Spirit and then go out and then go out and preach and minister and bring those people in that they will be saved in Jesus name yes. I thank you for this time that you have called us to it is not an accident that we are here today we were created on purpose with a purpose I, I thank you father God that right now you are creating clarity in the minds of the youth yes. that have been that have been uh, told to be confused yes. to be confused about themselves about yes. their surroundings yes about you, that there would be clarity and there would yes. be a knowing and an understanding that they are made in the image and likeness yes. of God and yes, they are Lord. holy and beautifully and wonderfully made in Jesus name. And we are standing in the gap of those who are, who do not yet know your goodness, God, and give us that opportunity to show them your goodness. Yes. Cause God, it's, it's, it's your love and your, your kindness and your mercy that leads people to change their minds about you. God, I thank you for your calling in this time. I thank you for Sean and the team and the Let Us Worship team. I thank you for everything that they are doing across this nation to gather your people and, and to equip them for, with what they need to go out into their areas to preach the good news. Oh, give you glory. Yes, in Jesus' name. Glory. Amen. <laughs> Let's do it.